So for the first time ever, Starlink is going to require a mandatory software update for some Starlink terminals to remain functional in Starlink's network. Is this going to affect your Starlink terminal? Come and join us for the details. Hi, I'm Dan from the Mobile Net Resource Center. So Starlink has been sending out emails to some customers whose hardware has older firmware letting them know they need to update their firmware by November 17, 2025, or their Starlink dish will no longer connect or function on Starlink's network. Now, there's an important um, distinction here that the hardware falls into two categories depending on how old your firmware actually is. If your firmware dates back to prior to early 2024, this actually becomes a critical update, and if you do not update your firmware, by November 17, 2025, your dish will fail to operate after that date. It will basically become useless after that date if you do not update the firmware. If you have firmware that's somewhere from early 2024 to late 2024, then you are going to require an update after November 17, 2025, but it's not as critical that you update it by that date. You can update it after that date and it will still work. It just won't connect until you actually do that software update. We'll go into the details how you can tell the difference of what version or what category your dish falls in and how critical this update is for your hardware. So both emails that were sent out do say action required, but it's the words after the action required that determine how critical this update is for you. If it says to plug in for critical updates and the keyword is critical, this means your hardware has a firmware that's almost two years old. And if you do not update it by November 17th, your hardware will no longer function after that date. Now, if your email just says software update needed without the word critical, then this means you have reasonably recent firmware and it's still going to be able to update after November 17th, but you are going to need that latest firmware update uh, in order to connect to the Starlink network after that date. And I'll go into a little more details about this. So if your email does say critical update, then you definitely need to update your firmware before November 17, 2025. So this is really going to come down to when is the last time you use your Starlink hardware. Now we have a companion article to this video and it's got a lot more details about the actual firmware numbers and I'll try to mention those, but we have those, all the exact firmware and what you need to look for and how to look for it in our companion article. But basically, if you haven't used your Starlink, in about the last two years or 21 months, uh, dating back to early 2024, you likely need the critical update in order for your Starlink dish to keep operating after November 17th. Now, if you used, have used your Starlink uh, sometime in 2024, but you haven't used it in 2025, you probably just need the software update, the less critical one. It's going to be a manual update using the app and it, you will just need this sometime after November 17th, 2025, if you wanna get on the internet. Of course, you can update it anytime between now and then, and everything will be fine. If you have used your dish in 2025, you most likely have the late, well, you most likely have a firmware that does not require any update at this time, and there's nothing to stress about. So it really goes back to about two years ago, if it's the last time you used your dish, or maybe a year ago. So if you need this update, how do you perform it? Well, it's pretty simple, and the main thing is you just need to power up your Starlink. It needs to be outside with a clear view of the sky, and then it will download a software update. If your software is about two years, about 21 months, but dating back to early, uh, late January, early February 2025, it's before that, your Starlink dish should update automatically. Uh, you should be able to look on the app and, and see that it has an update. It will update automatically. If your current firmware is somewhere in the 2024 range from uh, late January to late December, this will actually probably require a manual update with the app. Uh, we have in our article a link to Starlink's website that shows exactly the steps you need to take and it's pretty straightforward. The app will guide you through the process of updating your firmware. And as mentioned, if you are anywhere in the 2025 range, your Starlink has probably been updating all along and it may have an update if you haven't powered it on, but you have no worries um, about it not working or anything. So again, the most crucial update here is for hardware that hasn't been updated since about January, 2024, or about 21 months 
Uh, this video is being recorded at the end of October 2025. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy mobile internet related content, that is what we focus on here on the YouTube channel. So please consider subscribing and you can hit that notification bell to get alerted when we come out with a new video. Also, feel free to leave a comment below. We do read all of our comments. And if you want a lot more in-depth information on mobile internet, consider clicking over to our website. That's where the bulk of our content is. So we encourage you to do that. Again, thanks for watching. Now, one thing to let you know is that you do not need active service to update the software. So you don't have to go paying for a month of service just to update the hardware. All you need to do is put your Starlink out dish outside. It will talk to the satellites. It will download the software automatically. Uh, you won't be able to get on the internet, but you should be able to connect to the dish and see that it's updating. And we have in our article how to actually check to see what your current firmware version is and what to look for to see when it gets updated, which it should have a 2025 date when, once, it is, once it is updated. So why is Starlink requiring this update? Starlink's been around for about five years and this is the first time they're actually putting in a minimum firmware requirement for your dish to remain operational on their network. Well, at this point, they've been very good about uh, allowing the software, even older hardware, um, and the firmware to remain backwards compatible, and it's been able to update, even if your dish was offline for a year or more, it's been able to update usually with no problem. But now going forward, there's going to be this minimum uh, firmware requirement that you're going to have to have to enable to get future updates. Now, one of the changes they made is this early 2024 date that they are making as a minimum firmware, it actually allows you to sideload firmware updates through the app. It's a manual update. So going forward, this is going to make older hardware much easier to recover if it's way out of date by just sideloading a, a much newer version of the, of the firmware. And also likely Starlink has just ran into backwards compatibility issues that they need to just you know put a hard stop and say, we can't uh, support software before this date. So. As I mentioned, um, early 2024 is where they're requiring you to be for the minimal for future firmware updates. And then you have to have a late 2024 firmware update to actually be operational in the Starlink network. So there's two different dates there that you have to be passed to have a fully functional Starlink. You need to check your Starlink hardware even if you haven't unboxed it. Maybe you bought a Starlink unit some time ago and it's been sitting in a box and you haven't used it or maybe you used it for a little bit, turned it off, put it back in the box. Well, it's time to dig those out, set them up, let them update so that they remain viable on Starlink's network for the future and for future version updates. Now, one thing I want to make clear is Starlink is not discontinuing any particular hardware or anything. This actually just has to do with the firmware on any given hardware. So even the Starlink Gen 1 round dishies, the original Starlink dishy, is still going to be supported going forward. It just have, you just have to make sure it has a more recent firmware update. Um, if you have the Gen 1 round dishy, the Gen 2 standard actuated, the original HP dish that was actuated, uh, now called the Gen 1 performance, or the flat HP, now called the Gen 2 performance, all of this hardware, definitely needs to be checked for firmware updates. And even the very, very early Gen 3 hardware, if you picked one up and put it right in the closet, bought it from a store and never turned it on, even some of the early Gen 3 hardware could have older firmware updates and needs to be updated. So really any hardware that's been sitting around for a while should be started, turned on, started up, and allowed to update to the most recent firmware. If you purchased your Starlink hardware from a third party or you bought it used, you may not even get an email about this because Starlink has no idea that you even have this dish if you've never registered it. So that's going to be up to you to go and check your Starlink and again, to make sure it's up to date and stays viable. So when it's ready, if you want to use it. So one of the big changes this new firmware, minimum firmware requirement is going to change is buying you Starlink hardware. Um, already one of the things you had to worry about when you were purchasing used hardware was making sure the previous owner had actually transferred the dish off their account or you could not register it. But now as a buyer of used hardware, you're going to have to make sure that the Starlink dish you're looking to purchase actually has a firmware that's recent enough that it can still get updates and it can still function on Starlink's network. Um, there's gonna be hardware out there that 
has not been updated for years and it will never be able to become be put back in Starlink's network after this November 17th date. So this is something else to pay attention to if you are in the market for a used Starlink dish. And one of the things, um, Starlink hardware has continued to drop in price and we're almost getting to the point where purchasing new hardware is probably just worth it because you don't have the headaches of worrying about transferring, now worrying about firmware updates and possibly purchasing a dish that you can never even use and it just is a fancy lawn ornament. So going forward, you may wanna really look at buying new hardware or if you are gonna buy used hardware, make sure you've done your homework that it's transferred and it has a firmware update, a firmware version that can be updated. Keeping up with technology can be kind of frustrating, especially if you're not a technical person, but hopefully Starlink has made these updates as easy as possible for the end user. And for most people, it'll just be simply turning on your dish and letting it update or looking at the app and seeing if it's giving you the option to install an update manually. And in, and in that case, it should just you know lead you right through the steps that you need to do. Of course, you can always open a ticket with Starlink support. Just bring your patience. They seem to be taking a little longer lately answering tickets, and this certainly isn't going to help if people are reaching out, having trouble updating their Starlink. If you are unsure of the Starlink version you are currently on, the safest solution is just to start it up. And again, you don't need active service for this to get updates. So even if your Starlink's packed away, unbox it, set it up, let it run for a day. It should easily be able to grab an update. Just you know, check it, check the app, see what the version is, and hopefully it should be no problem just updating to the latest version. Now, unfortunately for some people out there, you may actually fall in the critical update zone where you have to update your, your Starlink, but you're physically nowhere near the dish. Maybe it's, it's at a remote cabin in Alaska or it's out on a boat somewhere stored away. Um, if you physically cannot get to your dish before the November 17th and you are under the critical update group, reach out to Starlink. They've always been pretty good about replacing hardware and we have a feeling in this case, they will probably be happy to replace hardware to keep someone you know, as a customer and subscribing to their service. If you're in that non-critical update and you can't get to your dish, don't stress about it. You're not in any danger right now of your dish not updating. It's just going to have to be updated once you can actually physically reach. Starlink has done a pretty great job of being able to keep older hardware um, updating, but obviously they've reached a turning point where they're going to have to, where they've had to set a boundary on, on a certain firmware. And so unfortunately this is going to be changing things going forward. Let us know how this is going to affect you or let us know if you are um, having any issues updating your firmware or if it's a pretty simple process. Hopefully for everyone it's a pretty easy process and your Starlink will continue to work as needed. Thanks for watching. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.